With this medal, Dimas becomes the most decorated Olympic weightlifter of all time. From this vantage point, it's easy to think his apotheosis to a weightlifting god was a given, but that's far from the case. Four years prior, in Sydney, he almost didn't make a total, let alone arrive on the podium. What was going to be done for the first time? I think he's blocked out. This is what I can do, Plaka. In Sydney, I had the chance to become an athlete who would win three gold medals. And that was my goal. The goal that kept me going in sports and gave me the cheese to go on. I entered the meet saying that if I get the gold medal, I'll then have won three gold medals, just like Solimanoglu did, which occupied a big part of my thoughts at the time. But then he bombed out, and that influenced me very much. I entered into that competition not focused, and for the first time, I was paying attention to what was going on in the stadium. When I missed the second attempt, I told Yakovu, I missed the second one too, put me at 180 kilos for the third attempt. He then gave me a slap on the back and said, do you understand that you're going to bomb out? At that moment, I was shaken and I woke up. I needed that slap. I did the third attempt and I realized what I was doing. I finally woke up there. And he's first. First after the snatch. Dimas in fourth place. There's some work to be done yet in this one. The Georgian athlete, Asenice, made a move at that point. He took out the flag of Georgia and opened it before me while we were opposite each other, and he put it on the chair and made movements suggesting that the competition was already over. At that moment, I called to my coach Christos and said to him, whatever they put on the bar, we'll put more. They load 205, we'll go 210. They put on 215, we'll go 220. I was so pissed at the time, and I, I don't really know why. Each athlete has a point where they react. I entered the jerk completely different. I had a different psychological mindset. I was more confident, more determined, and more effective. I was myself. In the years following his victory in Sydney, Dimas struggles with recurring injuries and surgeries, including to his road hitter cuff and meniscus. Despite these setbacks, he slowly begins to prepare for Athens 2004 after the operation on his knee. He will be nearly 33 years old by the time of the games in Athens. No matter what they say, when you get older and push yourself too hard, you have problems. You cannot be like you were when you were 20 or 25 years old. You're now 33. It's only logic that all you can do at this age is to use your experience and protect yourself as much as you can. If you can do that, just do it. I tried. I fought until the last possible moment. Twice I left the house with my clothes, and my bag, ready to leave, ready to stop trying. But I returned again to the group. I kept trying. I did the best I could do. But ultimately, with the problems I had, my leg betrayed me. A month and a half before Athens, Dimas undergoes another surgery on his knee to address debilitating pain. Then, in a trial session five days before he is scheduled to compete in Athens, he injures his wrist on a 170 kilo snatch due to his leg not being fully recovered from surgery. But he is determined to still compete one last time. 
We did a first application of xylocaine in my hand, and I snatched up to 140 kilos, but I was still in a lot of pain. I asked the doctor for a second application, but the time to the opening snatch at 167 kilos was just too short which is why we had to move up to 170 for the first attempt. This way, we would have more time. After that lift, the 175 kilos was only a dream. But the people, the mood of the people made me forget the pain as I went up to the platform. I forgot about everything, and I did my absolute best. I made 170, and then 175 kilos in the third attempt. To tell you the truth, I didn't expect that. After the second injection, I realized that I couldn't feel my hand anymore. And that didn't help in the clean because my hand kept moving around, once here, once there. I made my first attempt, and I knew after I did that 202.5 kilos, that 207.5 could potentially give me the gold medal. Yakovu wanted second or third by me having to do 205 kilos. He was certain of this, but there was still a lot of attempts ahead. I said, Christos, I have nothing to lose. In any way, I've already lost. I'm going for the gold. Give me two attempts at 207.5 kilos. This way I have the opportunity for two shots at the weight to win gold. It's either gold or nothing, and either way, I'm having fun. He ultimately decided it was better to go with 205 kilos, and I didn't give it any effort. I mean, I tried, but all I did was pull the barbell. I didn't want to go through with it. I lifted the bar past my knees and just let go. I gave up on the attempt at 205 and told myself I'd try my absolute best on the third attempt at 207.5. And I did just that. And then it didn't happen. And we lost. <laughs> After that, I went up to the podium to receive the bronze medal. I remember myself showing it to the people and saying, this much I could do. It was magical how the whole stadium stood in ovation for about 12 or even 13 minutes. The ceremony stopped because of the people's cheering. And it was the best feeling an athlete can have in his final fight at the end of his career. Yes, that healed my wounds and all that I had to go through. You skipped over the story of a the first time I'd seen this move of an athlete removing his shoes was in wrestling, never in weightlifting. I'd seen Karelin, the Russian, take his shoes off, and I liked the move. I thought when I stop, I'll do the same thing too. What happened to the shoes? Secret. <laughs> Top secret. <laughs> Dimas's fourth Olympic medal, bronze, confirms what Greeks have long known, that he is more than an ordinary athlete. He is a living legend and cultural touchstone. His exploits form part of people's speech. In Greece, when we say that we have to put an effort, we say, stay behind the bar, below the bar. If you see the video from the Atlanta, you can hear. Katsak out of the bara. Stay. Is he going to take home? Yeah. Stay there. And a new world record. The gold he's got. And another world record. Oh. You say it. You say it. Because of the Olympics. <laughs> His feats of strength rival those of ancient myths. The best uh, snatch was uh, 190, but with 92. Body weight. In clean 225, 220 clean and jerk, front uh, squats 290, 290 kilo. And uh, three, 325 in uh, back, 325. 
Like a Byzantine icon, his image on this poster keeps watch over thousands of lifters across the world. He is recognized by his compatriots and still adored. Perhaps because this is Greece's last Olympic medal in weightlifting and the end of an era. In 2004, problems are already starting for Greek weightlifting and the country's athletic golden age is ending. Soon, problems will spread to the country as a whole. Overseas now to Greece, a country on the brink of collapse. Austerity over the last three years has actually caused its output to fall by 12%. They really are discontent. A country deeply divided. All week, the banks closed, life savings locked up inside. And still, Dimas's legend and exploits live on, independent of their origin, and independent even of him. Yet he seems remarkably casual about his success. People often tell me, you have been deprived of too many things. But I tell them, no, I haven't been deprived of anything. I did what I liked, and that's why I succeeded. Simply because I did what I liked. Nobody put a gun to my head. I just liked it, and that's why I did it. Do you ever think what would have happened if you never climbed that wall to get that fruit and your, your coach never chased you on the bike? <laughs> I would have played football, definitely not weightlifting. At that time, football prevailed, and like all children, I liked it too. I think the sport you are playing is the one that wins. I would never have gone to weightlifting on my own if someone hadn't seen me that day. But I'd still be involved in sport, so I wouldn't be lost. <laughs> My name is Kara Hedges. <laughs> Where's the camera going to be recording this off? Are we going to get another set in there? <laughs> Every time you guys are up there, my parents are always like, these guys are professional, they really know what they're doing. <laughs> oh, I want to eat now. <laughs> Time to eat. <laughs>